Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Today this is a voice recording to do uh, this rigid body kind of animation in Blender 4.0. The main purpose is to introduce you a preset called the Relax, a Relaxation Solver, you can, which you can download for free from the link in the description. Uh, the principle has been discussed by many people already but I made that in the preset. And uh, I'm not really an expert in physics simulation and it's very confusing. So whatever I introduce may not be really correct, but at least uh, we can achieve the result for this particular animation. So let's uh, start. So here we in Blender, let's go to nodding. Let's add a plane. Listener has a lot of frustration in managing this kind of stuff. So it's uh, it's very difficult and I don't think I will make many tutorials about it. Actually the entire point is really just to test the relaxation solver which is uh, like the rigid body to avoid the intersection. But I want to test if it can work in simulation zone as a force. So yeah, uh, let's take a join in geometry and we are basically adding particles every frame. So let's take a point. I'm adding a single point. And at the end of the day, I'm going to instance an icosphere with this generation of particles. Right now, we are generating particles at the same place. So there should be about 37 points because I'm at a 38 frame, but they are not moving because I didn't add anything. So here let's add a, a set uh, particle parameter. This is essentially just to store named attributes. I have velocity, ID, and the birth dates, which outputs an age, but yeah. So in this case, I think uh, I have a direction variation. I'm not sure if it's working in this case. Uh, let's forget about that. Just the store name, the attribute. I'm going to rewrite the velocity. So this velocity is actually a named attribute. And this attribute is being named as a V. So we can just use a V. It's a vector. So you can use this velocity, but I don't want to confuse you. So I'm just going to use this uh, uh, velocity. Okay, And let's name that as a V. So what I'm trying to do here is to take a random vector. So I take a random value to give a vector. And uh, the entire point, instead of using this velocity, is because I want to get this uh, ID so that every particle is having a different result. Uh, it's not necessary in this case because we're only generating one particle, so use the same time is enough for the ID or seed. But uh, in case you generate multiple particles, you want to add this anyway. So let's take a negative so that I can define the minimum and the maximum at the same time using a single value. And I plug this into, and I take a value position just to decrease this velocity by 10. Okay. So now you, if you see it, you do not see any animation because we didn't animate yet. We take a set position. And as I said, you can use this velocity to the offset because inside is a named attribute. But just uh, to not confuse you, I'm just going to do this. So now we are emitting lots of particles, as you see. Let's increase the duration of this entire thing, maybe 5,000. So this is what we are having now. And you can also change your seed, use the same time frame. I oh, know it's actually. It's actually fine. Yeah, it should be fine. Yeah, anyway, so this is what we're getting, but uh, I only need one particle in this tutorial. OK, 
Okay. Right now, all these particles are going outside with a constant velocity. And I want to add a attraction force to the middle. So we need to redefine this velocity. Uh, and uh, basically, to get all these kind of points into the middle, we subtract the current velocity with their position. Then you will generate uh, a velocities towards the middle. But uh, there is a kind of problem. Uh, if you directly subtract this position, it means the magnitude, like uh, this position is farther than this position. So the force is also much larger to the middle. The end result is that uh, my point will basically stay in the middle because the attraction force is too strong. So here I'm going to normalize. Normalize. No, uh, it's the vector max normalize. Yes. Which means no matter how far you are away from this origin, like your point may be here, your point may be there, but the force is always one. So this is called a normalize. Okay. So that uh, we have a better chance that this point will get out this uh, gravity or attraction force. If your velocity is large enough. Okay. So here, we try to scale this position. Uh, we we'll try to scale this position, and uh, let's just take another value position to divide by ten. So it's slowly decreasing the magnitude of our velocity. So now this is what we're seeing. Maybe yes. So now you can see there they move out, but uh, finally they reach velocity zero and they went back. Okay, so this is okay. This is fine. Next, we need to work on this relaxation, which is basically a colliding force to move these points, and uh, it's kind of tricky that. Uh, you can do this relaxation before or after, but I think I will do that after. So I'm evaluating a status after you apply the initial velocity and this attraction force. And uh, uh, in normal cases, I will put this relaxation point in between this geometry so that I automatically set the position to the relaxed points. But in simulation zone, it's not only the position that matters, but the velocity also matters, because if two points are colliding with each other, of course their velocity will change. Maybe they will just repulse each other away. So we need to redefine the velocity in this scenario too. So here I'm going to add the geometry into the points. But I'm not going to directly plug this relaxed point. Instead, I'm going to set the position to use this sample position and also use this offset to define a new velocity. Uh, here, notes we are using velocity to define the offset, which means the offset can be a velocity as well. So we store a new named attribute. Let's call that a force. The reason I don't use velocity in this case is because I want to have a decay of the previous force. So we take a name the attribute and it should be force. And in this offset, I add my force together. 
but I'm going to have a decay of it. So I scale. That's done. Like uh, fifty percent. Hmm. No, I think I will use the old force. But uh, when we redefine the force, I will scale that down by fifty percent. So now if we play this animation, you can see they are not really avoiding intersection. Uh, note that uh, we're using the radius of points, but the points is like 0 0.1 meter. So we set that to 1 to make sure that uh, our icosphere radius is matching the radius of points. And another thing we can change uh, is to crank up the iteration to have a better accuracy. This group node is highly optimized, which means you can type 1000 iterations. But uh, once you do not find any intersection inside the group node, maybe it's at uh, 6 or 7 iterations, then it will stop. So you can type 1 billion, it's fine. Uh, it's not really recommended. But you can really type a high number and it will be very fast due to the optimization. And uh, anyway, even if we have iteration 4, you can see they do not have intersection, but it's kind of very ugly right now. So we need to change that a little bit. There are many ways to solve this problem. For example, uh, currently we're using a full force to it. Mm, we can define the force before we offset it. Or mm, I think uh, what we can do is to decrease the force. So that it will be less jacked. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I think we can take this force before. And we scale that. So we redefine it. And now we add this force back for the evaluation. So now it looks much better. And I think it will be yet. And uh, right now we have too many particles because it's generating a new particles every frame. So it's a little bit difficult to visualize what's going on. Let's add a switch. And I only generate the particles after a interval. So let's take a modulo 4. Modulo 4 will contain a time. And uh, it's basically the modulo function. And when you are looping, when you are looping at a specific number, then you will output a 0. And when you output a 0, you output a true. So now if I turn these steps into 55, then you can see if I play this animation, after 55 frames, I generated the first particle. So let's take an offset so that I have particles at the most beginning, but I only generate one particle after 55 frames. So now I have second particles, third particles, fourth particles, fifth particles, five particles, and basically this is it. And I would say this is yet. You can tweak a little bit more stuff. And I hate that because it's really difficult to uh, kind of understand when you redefine the velocity and how you redefine the velocity and when to separate the velocity and the force, when not to separate them. It's a little bit confusing, but uh, you may get sort of idea over time. 
And then you just uh, tweak parameters to make this uh, animation a little bit uh, better and uh, less jaggy or other things. There is another preset I can talk about. It's the temporal smooth position. But uh, I don't want to discuss it here because it may actually increase the uh, increase the result of this uh, reportion. But I'm reminded that we can mix. We can mix, mix. I need a mix vector. Yes. So I do not directly repulse everything, but I can mix vector with its original position. So that I only repulse a half every frame, but uh, the rest will be compensated by this offset. I hope this will be a little bit uh, uh, better. Okay, it's not <laughs> working as expected at all. Mm. But anyway, I think you can get a sort of idea. Uh, I think I will just stop it here. As I said, this is completely experimental and I'm not uh, good at uh, this kind of stuff. So I hope you enjoy this video. I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.